Hi everyone. In this video, let's see about servlet interview questions and answers. Please watch this video without skipping. Let's start. First question, what is servlet? Before seeing about servlet, let's understand what is client and server. Client is nothing but a browser from which we'll be sending request. So this request will be reaching the server. Server means it is a network computer or a computer program that processes this request from client. That is nothing but the browser. Okay, servlet means it is a web component that is deployed on the server to create a dynamic web page. So sometimes whatever request the client is requesting, right, that will be like uh, need to be loaded uh, dynamically. So that is called dynamic web page. Uh, so for this purpose, we need a servlet. Servlets are nothing but a Java program that run on the web server or the application server. Okay, now let's understand how this servlet works. First, we'll have client and server. So this client will send request to the server and this server if it is a direct request so it will have something called the static web pages uh, that is uh, already available web pages within that so it will send that as response to the client so this is one flow and what if this client is requesting something which is not available in the server that is dynamic web page so in that case the server will have something called web container and with the help of that uh, it will reach the application that is normal uh, java java application so in that uh, we have some servlet programs and also it is connected to db so based on that it will process and fetch the information and send back to the server and then this server will send will send back the response to the client so now we have one question right how this server will know what is what client is requesting so for that also we have something called deployment descriptor that is web.xml a normal xml file so in that we have something called mappings so for which request which should be called like that we have some mappings uh, so we will understand more about this web.xml in next slide uh, okay this is how the servlet will work now let's see how mapping is done by using web.xml here we have two tags servlet and servlet mapping so inside servlet there is servlet name and servlet class so this is nothing but the name of the servlet and then uh, servlet mapping inside that we have servlet name and url pattern so this is the url of the respective servlet so based on this only uh, when the client request uh, so it will be mapped to the respective servlet uh, programs explain servlet life cycle first servlet is loaded that is based on load on startup tag in the web.xml the servlet will be loaded then servlet is instantiated that is it will check for the respective servlet class in the web.xml file then the servlet is initialized then service the request that is by using service method it will process the request and finally the servlet will be destroyed so this is the life cycle of servlet what are the important packages of servlet? There are two packages, first one javax.servlet and then javax.servlet.http package. So first javax.servlet package, it contains classes and interfaces used by the servlet or web container. The next one, as the name says, it is specifically for HTTP request only. So it contains classes and interfaces for HTTP request. What is the difference between generic servlet and HTTP servlet? The generic servlet is defined by javax.servlet package whereas http servlet is defined by javax.servlet.http package and it extends the generic servlet class only. The generic servlet is not dependent on any particular protocol so it is not protocol dependent and it can be used with any protocol such as http, smtp, ftp and so on whereas http servlet as the name says, it is a dependent protocol and it is used with the only uh, the HTTP protocol. So this is the main difference. Then in generic servlet, the service method is abstract. Whereas in HTTP servlet, the service method is non-abstract and can be used uh, and can be replaced by do get or do post methods. What is do get and do post methods? These are important methods. Let's see that. These methods are available in javax.servlet.http.http servlet class 
and it is called via the service method first do get as the name says it will be called when the client request a get method and it is used to retrieve the information from the server then do post so here also it will be called by the server when the client request a post method so it is used to send information to the server what is filtering in servlets as the name says it is mainly used to filter the request so it is an object and that is invoked before and after the execution of a servlet so before uh, reaching the actual uh, class or something uh, if you want to do some operation uh, like validation uh, we can add that in this filtering so it is mainly used to validate the data coming from the client and the available method is do filter inside that servlet request servlet response and the filter chain so inside this we can add the logic to do the validations difference between forward method and send redirect method both these methods are used to forward the request from one uh, servlet to another but still some differences are there let's see them forward method it belongs to request dispatcher interface whereas send redirect method it belongs to http servlet response interface the forward method it will work at server side the send redirect method it works at client side and the forward method it is used to send the same request and response to the another servlet so this is the main difference whereas the send redirect method here since it is kind of redirection the request and response will be changed from one servlet to the other servlet Uh, so here in forward uh, the original url remains unchanged whereas in send redire redirect method the original url will be changed since the request is re getting redirected example for forward method request dot get request dispatcher so inside that the servlet name then dot forward the forward method inside that we have to pass the request comma response then in send redirect method the example is response dot send redirect the servlet to what is the difference between servlet config and servlet context a servlet config it is servlet specific whereas servlet context is available for whole application the servlet config each servlet has got its own servlet config object whereas servlet context since it is available for whole application it is only one and used by different servlets of the application the servlet config use servlet config when only one servlet needs information shared by it for example we can take the department name so this department name can be considered as one servlet and there will be many departments right so each department will be available to that specific servlet only so whereas the servlet context we can take example as company name so here this company name will be available to all the servlets since it will be common right so uh, that will be taken as example the parameters of servlet config are present as name value pair in init param whereas servlet context will be available in context param in some annotations in servlet tree first at web servlet it is used to declare a servlet at web init param so it is used to specify an initialization parameter then at web filter to declare a servlet filter then at web listener So it is used to declare a web listener. At servlet security, it is used to specify security constraints on HTTP protocol messages. So in high level, uh, these are the definitions for the annotations. What is session tracking? Before that, we need to understand HTTP protocol is a stateless. That means it can't remember the user request. So when each time user request to the server. it will treat the request as the new request only so we need something called session it which is nothing but a state of particular period of time between the client and server and this session tracking is a way to maintain the state of a user so it is also known as session management we have some techniques to do the first one cookies then hidden form field you are rewriting HTTP session. What is a cookie? As we saw previously, it is used to maintain the session. So how that is done means, it is a little piece of data 
that is delivered by the web server in the response header and kept by the browser so this data will be maintained in the browser itself each time web client can be assigned a unique session id by a web server so cookies are used to keep the session going and one more thing like uh, these cookies can be turned off by the client so we can decide if we need this information or not what is a hidden form field this is also one of the technique for session tracking and how here it is done means the information is inserted into the web page via the hidden form field which is then transferred to the server as the name says these fields are hidden from the user's view example input type equal to hidden name equal to session value is equal to 1 2 3 4 5 so here we are uh, saving the session field uh, like hidden one so that we can use this for session tracking purpose now let's see the one more session tracking technique url rewriting it is a process of appending or modifying any url structure by loading a page how it is done means we append a token or identifier to the url of the next server or the next resource and the format of that is url question mark name 1 equal to value 1 and name 2 equal to value 2 what is http session here the user session is represented by the http session object this is nothing but a collection of data about a user that spans many http requests so based on http request we are tracking here like how we can get session means we have something called request dot get session method and if you want to set the attribute to the session means like session dot set attribute of username comma password like this we can set the session